Hi everyone, we've got Lauren Gaggioli with us tonight. Well, it's tonight for me because I'm in Oslo. <laughs> Where on earth are you? I'm in the Seattle area, the Pacific Seattle Northwest area. Okay. of the US. So, oh, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so our time's a little bit uh, different. It's uh, 11.30 p.m. here right now. Oh my so, goodness, yes. Oh, it's yes. only 2.30 here, so ah, glad okay. we could sync up. <laughs> Thanks good, for good, staying good. up late. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully this will give you a drive to get through the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So, so Lauren, um, you've got quite an interesting background and one of the reasons I wanted to chat to you is because obviously this is a digital marketing and communications uh, podcast. So we're going to be talking about that, but won't you give me a little bit about your background and some of the, the cool things that you've been up to? Well, if you go in the way, way back machine, my degree is in theater. Uh, so I went to NYU, uh, studied at Tisch and... Um, realized after moving back to LA that uh, something I really appreciate and value is efficiency. And boy, if movie sets are just not an efficient place. I mean, they're doing the best they can, but there's a lot of moving pieces. And yeah. I found myself incredibly bored as I tried to like climb that ladder. And so instead, and you know, also to supplement, I started tutoring in person and I helped kids with our college admissions uh, tests in the, in the States. So the ACT and the SAT, and I really found a passion for it. I loved connecting with my students, but I realized very quickly that a girl can get real burned out driving, you know, all over a tarnation. It was like 22,000 miles in a year. Um, so a lot of time in the car gave me a lot of time to listen to podcasts and learn about the online space. And so way back in 2014, I launched my very first online program. And so it was all in the college admissions space. I had a podcast about college admissions, four different test prep options for folks. But the thing that I found the most exciting was the opportunity in this online space. Like I said, I love efficiency. So if I can create a piece of content and it can be found for years to come and be send people who I am trying to help to my doorstep via Google and search right at the right time that they need the services I offer, my goodness, what what more could you ask for as a digital marketer? And so I really fell in love with SEO and organic marketing as sort of a side and an ancillary aspect to creating the courses and delivering the content. And so as a solopreneur, I was able to generate 200,000 unique users to the site per year. So that's about 16,000 new users from Google for free, no ad spend directly to my doorstep right when they needed me. And I was right there to welcome them with open arms. And it was really powerful as I became a mother, as my family moved from California to Washington and I was full-time momming and getting us set up up here. You know, it was really lovely to work about four hours a week and still trust that I could have impact, that I could serve these students in this really stressful time with techniques that I had honed over the years. And I didn't have to be the one delivering it one to one. It was just a really wonderful sort of full circle way to go from like hustling my buns off and driving all over to like, ah, the cushy life, but still on fire for what I was doing just in a different way. And now that's what I help folks with. I help solopreneurs and some small businesses build their web presence and to do it by leveraging the power of uncle google that already exists well we can we can talk a little bit about uh, how the google algorithm has changed and how the analytics have changed with the move over to um <laughs> from universal analytics to um uh, uh what's it uh, ga4 google GA4, analytics yeah. uh, 4. <laughs> But I, but I think a point that you've made there that uh, people sometimes forget with when they create their content is that whatever you put on the internet stays on the internet. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing as well. So yes. when we talk, you're talking about evergreen content. So maybe talk to me about one or two of the pieces of content that have just lived with you since, you know, uh, that have generated value for you over the years. And, and what was different about it versus other pieces of content that just, just never fired? 
So I think the main thing is to look at keyword research from the jump through two lenses. So what we want our websites to do is sort of stand at the intersection of our robots and human users, right? We have to be thinking along both tracks. So when it comes to doing keyword research and thinking hierarchically and, you know, what sort of content verticals are we speaking to? Where are we demonstrating our expertise, authority, and trustworthiness, the EAT, um, that Google is looking for in a website? How are we creating an interlinking structure that supports the site, right? Thinking about the on-page SEO, so back-end, but also front-end. And then thinking about, and this was the piece I didn't quite have when I was, when I launched Higher Scores, was that understanding the conversion piece and how do I facilitate transformation for a person with a problem who uses Google as a matchmaker, because that's what Google is, to connect them with the problem that they are trying to solve. They connect, it connects them with the solution. How do I meet that person where they are, reflect that I understand their struggle, and then help them take the first right step, and then welcome them into what I call my own ecosystem. So I call it organic marketing ecosystem. How do I facilitate that transformation? So we have to think about where those pieces stand. And one thing that um, my original web designer, I now do kind of everything myself, but in those early days, I knew I was going to have my courses self-hosted because I'm a control freak. Um, and I, you know, Stripe was had not been on the scene that long. And so like the, the APIs and the integrations that you have just at your fingertips to do yourself these days, it wasn't quite the same. So I had to have some custom coded solutions. Um, and so... In that process, that was a big investment I made on the front end because I wanted it to all be secure and rock solid. And one thing she said, she's like, I did some quick and dirty keyword research and I found not that many people are meeting a search intent for users who need ACT and SAT test dates available on the same page. And so that was the main page on my site that drew folks in. I had a calendar. I updated it every six months with upcoming test dates because there are 14 each year in the US. And a lot of people don't understand how it works. And so the other thing that I did was had I had a printable PDF there that folks could download I did not gate the PDF, and that was probably a big mistake on my part. Um, so I made that totally free, and I didn't really capture that traffic as well as I could have for a future conversion. But then down the line, I had an opportunity to write an editorial piece um, for the for USA Today. It was kind of like an ad editorial. It was like kind of a little insert for about college affordability, and that was a connection I constantly made between why we do test prep. And I had like numbers to back that up, the ROI that a lot of my students who won amazing scholarships because of their increased scores, I made that connection quite often. And so I was on the short list to be invited to sponsor this. And then I was able to write a piece about that. And I created the insider's guide to the ACT and SAT. And so that was a piece that had I had that when I was generating all that traffic and, you know, working my my four hours a week, had I had that piece in place, I think we could have done even better than we did. However, that piece to date still converts to sales within the first two weeks at a rate of like 1.3%. So 1.3%, that's kind of average, a little above average, in fact. So you know, it's that next step that serves. People aren't necessarily searching insider's guide to the ACT and SAT, but if they come looking for those test dates and then I can invite them in and say, hey, by the way, like I can show you exactly what to do here, 35 strategies in this killer ebook, and then have that nurture sequence to support them, it can really support that journey. So wow. yeah, that's, that's the, I think the, the flow that now is, is still working for the company, even though I have sold it at this point. Um, so it's still, still running gangbusters for them. And I, I just love the longevity of it, you know? Well, I, I think it's amazing that uh, people come onto your website because you have something useful to give them. Who would have thought that? <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Marketing is so tricky. I know. So, so <laughs> it's tricky. so and, hard. <laughs> and, and, and we get a lot of, uh, you know, I've done tons of websites and I, mm -hmm. I've worked on, on building websites with, with various people. And they just put as much content as they can 
irrelevant content, nothing that really adds value to the person coming onto the page. And I think mm. what you've mentioned there in terms of websites and in terms of content is and and your your the search engine side is that people are actually searching for solutions to their to their problem or they're searching for for, for specific things that are going to help them make a decision or they they they're going onto the internet not for fun but to actually solve an issue and what i really like about you, what you said there is that you really understood what the what your customer wanted mm-hmm. so there it was a very 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 niche very specific search term and you can't just have generic search terms you can't just have um put in SATs, GPAs, et cetera, because there are thousand, ten a million other websites doing exactly yes. the same, exactly the same thing. Now, what the second thing that you mentioned was the lead mm-hmm. nurturing. Mm-hmm. And 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 for me, uh, again, I feel that people have a website, they have a uh, you can download an ebook perhaps, and that gate that gating the PDF Brilliant. I mean, you, you have to do that. And yes. it's a learning that, that you have to learn the hard way. But yes. I think hopefully people, if people listen to this, they will get their, um, uh, their useful content in order yes. to start that discussion with customers and get them uh, into your pipeline. Talk to me a little bit about your CRM, which is your um, customer relationship management system. What do you use? Uh, do you use emails, uh, text messages? How do you nurture your 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 customers? So I use Active Campaign, which um, you know ConvertKit is probably the the other kind of front runner in terms of like email management and the amount of flexibility and capability that you have to build these really robust automations to continue to support folks. So. Um, that's what I used and I actually used it to support my clients as well. So my courses, my most robust course was, um, oh gosh, it was like 12 weeks long. (laughs) So long ago. I'm like, was it 12? Yes, it was 12 weeks. And these are teenagers we're talking about. So I needed to be able to like continually support them. And so I was able to create sort of this cool automation based on a tag that would be appended to their their content information when they joined based on what tests they were taking. So imagine you're taking a test in May and you signed up right now in August. This automation would automatically tag and then kind of back solve for all the dates and drip it out so that you were hitting the mark every single time that that last like, and good luck email happened that Thursday right before their test. So it was like a countdown to keep them on track. Lots of other supportive uh, material in there as well, of course, printed syllabuses and whatnot. But um, I think many people are under leveraging the capability of their email services because really most email services, even free ones now have the ability to do automations, which again was not true. I tried so many different ones. I like kept switching them out. And then once I found active campaign, I was like, I know this, I know there are other tools that could do it. Maybe they're cheaper and better. You know, now I don't know because I just put my head down. I have this thing called the mole method where I pop my head up I look around and I go, what's the timeless stuff that's going to last? Okay. And I'm putting my head down and I'm just going to execute on that until something necessitates a change because I see so many entrepreneurs get stuck in the whirlwind of shiny object syndrome and wanting to just switch every two seconds. So I try to like curb that in myself. But all that to say with a nurture sequence, you know, I leverage Thrive Themes on my site as well, um, which is a really amazing uh, plugin and like WordPress management tool. And it allowed me to create ultimatum campaigns that were evergreen. So they would start when a user would click a particular link. So I could provide a special discount, but only for a limited time. And it was different for everybody coming through the door. So I love that like You're here, you have the problem now, obviously, because you just found me. Let me kind of give you like everything in the kitchen sink, but in an educational way. So folks are familiar with like the sideways sales letter where you take a really long sales letter and you just kind of trip it on its side and you start dripping out little pieces, kind of like you would do where you're like, I see the struggle you're having. 
Great. Let's talk about that struggle and let me give you some quick wins. Okay. Next one. You want to take next right steps? Let, here's, here's a piece of educational content. Hey, you might have objections about this paid service that I'm offering. Let me address that in yet another email. And so you just kind of drip those out for that buyer intent keyword. And you support folks as they are trying to make their decision about who to work with if this is the kind of problem that needs to be solved imminently. If they are not ready to buy, that's okay. Just loop them into a general nurture sequence after that and continue to educate. I think what we have to remember as marketers is that we're not, or, or sellers, we're not really marketers or sellers, we're problem solvers. And if we come at it through that lens, we necessarily put the person on the other side of the screen first over our need of give me your credit card, give me your credit card, right? And that is obviously a necessary piece of entrepreneurship. You've got to make money. Otherwise, you know, why are we here? But you make money when you solve the problem. So help show people how you solve the problem. Give examples and testimonials and talk about your methodology. Don't be afraid to like let them peek behind the curtain a little bit. And eventually, if you are the right fit and you show up time after time and say, hey, remember you asked for this? Can I help you? Hey, remember you signed up for this? Can I continue to help you? Hey, I have additional information that I'm creating. Would you like some more? And you just keep asking how you can serve them. And sometimes it's as simple as a little email that's, hey, you signed up for this. I haven't heard from you. Are you okay? Like, can I help you in any way? Do you have a quick question? Email me back if you do. And, you know, just kind of creating that personal touch, that is, I think, the best way to support folks to be there ever present when they are ready to finally make that leap to solve whatever problem it is you solve. Well, I, I think that uh, a, a very good insight you've given there in terms of when the customer is ready to, to buy it. Um, I, I'm very much for the soft touch marketing. So yes. those kind of updates, not a hard sell, 50% off now. And it, it, it's it, it's it's too insincere, and I think um, the, the process that drip marketing, um, giving little bit of it, bits of information, just keeping your brand sort of top of mind or your or your service top of mind mm -hmm. in a regular way, it, for people who are interested, it sort of builds that um, uh, recognition and sort of comfort level with you that you're not just yes. sending one email. Also, that like you said, a a, a tome. Uh, yes. where, they've, where they've got to read through too much. So, so I, I'm I'm all for automation, and I think there are quite a few, especially since online training and uh, online universities uh, are sprouting up everywhere. I'm sure there must be. Uh, hopefully, some folks hear this and and get in touch with you because that that entire process I think is exactly the the right way the right way to do it. Um, well, and it's the kind of thing to. If people are coming to you, I always say I help entrepreneurs turn cold leads from the internet into happy clients. That is not a single step. That is many steps. And for different prospects, it's different amount of steps. And so understanding the avatar of that person on the other side of the screen, empathizing with them and being able to meet them where they are and support that and say, I see you and I'm here when you're ready. And until then, here's here's some good stuff that will get you started at least in the right direction. Now, Lauren, we've spoken about, you know, uh, this is training and, and uh, courses. What other applications have you um, worked on? So other than training and education, what, what um, other industry sort of works nicely with this type of work that you're doing? So I think every industry, there are opportunities. When you start to do the keyword research, when, when anybody has a problem, right, unless you're like trying to crowdsource your friends on social, if you have a problem, you're not scrolling going, gosh, I hope Zuckerberg drops the right ad in here. No, you go to Google. So I think I'm, I'm a possibility person. I see possibility and potential in a lot of different places. And so sometimes it is a little bit of like a side play, right? Or thinking through the strategy. So like, for instance, I have a client who is a Disney travel agent. So he is a travel agent. His services are free. He's paid a cut from Disney when he books a trip. And he has a whole team of agents underneath of him. 
And he he's a Disney nerd. I'm a Disney person as well. So he's a Disney nerd. He has all this Disney trivia at his fingertips. It's amazing. He's like a walking encyclopedia of the company's history. It's fantastic. But he was posting a lot about that. And people were finding him for that. So like he wrote really like cute and funny kind of off the wall, like who's the stinkiest character in all of Disney lore and things like that or, or the Disney rabbits. Like here's a post about all the Disney rabbits in the animated features. The problem is Google didn't know what he did, right? He was getting found for that stuff, which is fun and in the Disney sphere. But if someone's searching for Disney rabbits, that doesn't mean they want to book a trip. You know, maybe it's a like, project or something that they're, or they're just curious, right? So we had to do a little bit of shifting of his expertise and authority in the eyes of Google. And we started writing Disney travel posts. But the thing is, we realized very quickly, we can't write about restaurants at Disney because the problem, at least not at first, because the problem with that is people are standing in the parks already and Googling where should I eat? I'm now in Magic Kingdom. Help me. He's not going to make a commission off that. So we started answering questions like, how much does a Disney cruise cost? Or what's the best hotel near Epcot? And these are all terms that we found by doing really robust keyword research. And we were able to sort of pivot his visibility to Google. And now those travel-related inquiries, where on that page we can say, do you want a free travel quote? Do you want to pay a free travel quote? Do you want a free travel quote? Here's what it's going to cost you to go. Would you like a free travel quote? We're happy to book it for you at no cost to you. That's a really easy pivot, right? Yeah. And so thinking about that search intent, thinking about where people are in their um, buyer's journey. I also find, and this is something you'll, you, if you start to do keyword research, you'll get very mad about the things people are not searching. You'll be like, why is nobody asking what is the tie between ACT scores and scholarships? You're like, why is nobody asking that? So you have to like find creative ways to kind of put your wrinkle into what already is being searched. Put your own unique lens on it still meets search intent because if you try to flip it too soon, people will leave your site. They'll be like, this isn't what I searched for. But if you can start weaving in like a yes and, right, you bring your improv exercise and go, you just asked me how to get a better ACT score. Here are some steps you can take, but it is work. And do you know that there's a bigger carrot on the other side? And that carrot is how to pay for college. And that is why in every one of my courses, I include an additional course, a bonus course for free, a hundred dollar value, how to turn your test scores into cash for college. Well, and now, I included well, now that. you want me to, you're getting me excited to do an SAT, <laughs> even though luckily I don't, need to, I don't need to do that anymore. Um, <laughs> you, you touched on, you touched on, um, keywords and mm -hmm. content. Now, content is something that, that <laughs> content creation is something I love. You're talking about all of these drip emails. You're talking about keyword searches. Obviously, you can just go to ChatGPT and press and write me some content. Oh. Tell, me how, <laughs> tell me how long it takes you and your team to write good content. How long does a good email take? How many emails do you have to write? How many responses do you have to write? Uh, I want clients and students and people to understand that uh, because it's one I feel it's one of the things that stops people from doing good work is there's I've got to write 100 mails I've got to, and then they just don't do it. So maybe just talk me through that process. How long does it take you? How do you do the briefing? How do you build up the energy to go, oh, God, I need 50 emails, 100 emails? So. I am a solopreneur. I have no one on my team right now. So that's something to keep in mind. I could also say it takes 10 years because I've honed this craft over 10 years. Yeah. And you mentioned ChatGPT. Listen, if you think Google doesn't know if you're posting stuff written by it, by AI, uh, you, you, you underestimate the power <laughs> of yeah. the Google side. And they, they know. They know. So... I think, um, you know, when it comes to me, I'm very, I'm, I'm a connections person, right? I make really weird and disparate connections. And so like I'll loop in gifts and memes and like 
quotes from movies and books that I've read and, and all that. So my brain is kind of already wired to write. I love to write. If you don't love to write, please don't just click on ChatGPT, copy and paste it into your website. You will get dinged for that. It is not very original. Um, that said, I do have, when we work with consulting clients, I have an SEO copywriter who I partner with. I do the strategy, she does the execution, and she leverages AI to find gaps in the knowledge out there. So what I love to think about is all roads lead to my website. Because repeat visits from folks is huge for Google. If people come to your site through organic search, they sign up for your email, and then they never hit your website again, you are dripping liquid gold out your business. Because Google, if you send that person another email three days later and you're like, hey, you signed up for this free thing, let me tell you what, there's another really amazing resource that you might not have seen. It's this blog post that I wrote about X. Here's a link. Come and read more. Here's a little bit of like a juicy takeaway, but I want you to see the original thing and then have them come back to your site. And Google's going to go, oh, this person went away. And of all the websites in all the towns of the internet, they came back to this one, right? So they are going to see that cyclical effect. So what I love to think about is I'm going to write amazing content. And sometimes it's really fast. Sometimes I'm able to just do a video pull the transcript, kind of judge the transcript and chuck it up there. Some days I'm in flow. Some days it's harder, right? Some days you're like, I'm beating my head against the wall trying to get these words out. It's just not happening. So I can't really give, and also I've been doing it for a very long time. So I can't really give like how long it will take someone else, but leverage the research phase and know that less is more in a sense, like you still need to be moving, but needs to be quality first. So whatever quality takes for you, just start moving in that direction. Make sure it's research-backed. No spaghetti at the walls marketing. Research-backed so that you know eventually it will rank. And I will tell you I'm having a win right now on my site. I am on the third page of Google for a, a post I wrote about nine books um, to help you live your purpose, to help you name and live your purpose. This post, I had to read all nine books, right? So I've technically been researching it for years. But I put those books up there. That post has been living on my site for I think about four months. It has about 1,500 potential search volume. It's an opportunity that I found that not many people were capitalizing on. I'm now on the third page of Google for that. So am I getting any organic search? No, but I'm going to because I just made a video. I'm posting that. I'm embedding that. I'm doing sort of second tier stuff. So start to think of it in layers, right? You can want to make a YouTube video and an amazing graphic and uh, an infographic and you want to do social media and all the things. The blog post rules. So write the blog post. Then three days later, write the, drop it into your nurture sequence somewhere. Write that singular email. And then when it starts to jump up, you go, ooh, okay, now I'm going to go do the YouTube video and you kind of back solve it. So think of it in layers and coming up with that for yourself. If you're more of an agency or you have a team, maybe you can streamline that a little bit more. But as a solopreneur who just needs to get it out of her head, I'm like, any way I can get it out, I'm getting it out. And the first all roads start and end at my website. And then I can do nine features of like, hey, I'm that friend who always has a book for you. Here's this book. And by the way, I wrote about eight others on this post. You can go over here and you link it up in a story and you're good. So I can do that now nine times on social. But to me, everything starts with the keyword research and writing the blog post first. Now, like I said, the best place to bury a dead body is the second page of Google. I'm on the third. So I've got like zombie post rising here. Like it's coming. I can see it. I just, I'm going to keep babysitting it and driving traffic and then it'll be It'll be up and driving traffic and it's optimized to bring people in and I'm going to get people through my nurture sequence with that and I'm going to be able to help people find and name their purpose and that's going to be amazing. But it's taken a while. So it takes time, but you have to get started in order for it to get started, right? You have to, you have to write the post first. So do that and understand sort of the strategies around it and the next steps and the next steps and follow those breadcrumbs. 
Well, I feel like you are preaching the gospel to me because there are so, <laughs> there are so many nuggets in there that if people actually just listen to the, you know, what you've said, they will, it will make a tremendous difference to their lives. But it's difficult. And it is. The, the, issue, the element that you haven't really touched on, and well, you have actually, is time. It's taken ah. you, like Google, like Tesla, 10 years to become a success. A lot of these posts... <laughs> you know, take time to develop, you need to create strategies around them. And if you believe in it, like, like you do, you look at ways to optimize it and you look at ways of, um, of uh, reusing that content to, and, and link content between your different pages and blogs mm. and posts to get that multiplier effect. And I think that's yes. what people, people get, I think they don't trust in their, perhaps they work enough or they think, okay, let me get onto something new and shiny. This isn't work. Whereas, Stick to one thing just for a while. Don't yes. go on to, you know, from B to B to B. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> recognize I, that I reference. You saw, what I, you saw what I did there. Um, uh, focus on something and, and put some effort and, uh, you know, stick at it. So I think yes. you've, you've mentioned some fantastic points there. And I think almost everything that you've spoken about, I would say I'd give a tick to. Yes, I, I should be doing that. I agree with that. So... Some really fabulous um, uh, um, uh, pointers that you've given us there. And I, and I really think um, anyone listening should apply it immediately. I, I'm actually going to do it myself. And um, I've got a new cohort of students uh, this year as well. And a lot of the things that you mentioned uh, sort of slipped from my mind. So I'm going to definitely tell them about this and get them to listen to this to to hear your specific points because I think if they do that they'll be much better marketers early on which will help them tremendously yes now before we go I want to ask in terms of your theater background now yes you are now a marketer and you are a, a solopreneur um, how has your different background from theater and music sort of um, helped you in your in your business do you think you know, it actually hindered me at first. So I am very comfortable when someone hands me a script to play a role. It has been very hard to figure out who I truly am and what I truly stand for and let the sort of character of high achieving, like superstar academic chick, like let that go and just be like, no, like there, I have other facets to me. Um, and really to sort of stand in that truth. And, but I will say, like, I think my, uh, you don't always see it with my content because sometimes I'm just like, I have to do it and it's ugly and I don't care anymore. It just has to be out there. Um, but I think like my ability to edit my own videos, I sort of knew what I was looking for, even though I hadn't been on like the film track, I I'd been in enough booths to like understand it. I understand ADR, which is really helpful. That's where you like record over a, a shot where like the audio didn't take. You're like, yes, <laughs> you're standing in a standing in a sound booth, like mirroring your own voice and intonation. Um, some people are really, really bad at that. I actually happen to be okay. So sometimes that saves me because <laughs> I go, oh, I said the wrong number. Let me just get on the mic and redo it. <laughs> So, um, but I do think, you know, there's, there's this sense of uh, Denise. I love Denise Duffield Thomas, who talks a lot about money mindset. Uh, she's an Australian, uh, solopreneur as or entrepreneur. Now she's, she's got a little bit of a team under her and I just so appreciate her, like, just get it out there mentality. It like allowed me to release the perfection that I came to demand from myself, that kind of work ethic that comes with theater. Um, you show up, you show out. Uh, so I can turn it on when I need to. And also I am getting better at letting go and just standing in like, I love this and that's okay. Like the character, the truest true me loves SEO. Like I love what it can give people. And if I can just share that, it's not what I'm quote supposed to be sharing. You know, there's like part of me that's like, oh, but like I'm a homeschooling mom and I'm not supposed to do that. No, this is what I love. And I'm just going to like keep saying it and sharing with other entrepreneurs how I can help them because I am so passionate about helping people work less and make more. Like that's, that's just amazing that if we can get that churning for folks, if we can get them executing and getting out of their own way with the content, 
our world is better when people are doing what they're meant to do. And this is what I'm meant to do. So I kind of have to embrace that some days, write my own script. <laughs> well, again, I think all the things that you mentioned will really strike a, well, strike a chord with me and I'm sure with the other folks listening to this as well. There's a, there's a wonderful uh, person that I interviewed very early on, uh, Tiffany Chan, and I'm definitely going to oh. put you in, t- in touch with her. Yes, please. Um, and uh, yeah, I, Just thank you so much for giving such fantastic insights. And I can see they're from the heart and I know you believe in them. And from my background, I know that they will work as well. So I honestly hope anyone listening to this really, you know, uh, takes it as gospel truth. This really (laughs) does work. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it just takes time and hard work and people don't like, you know, hard work and, uh, and (laughs) And waiting, waiting. but some people, (laughs) But some people do, but just don't get it right. And I think some of these mm-hmm. steps that you've that you've mentioned would really sort of transform some folks' businesses. So, Lauren, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to me. And uh, I hope to speak to you soon. I hope so, too. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Mm, come chat with Nicholas. He'll listen to you. Then he'll laugh and then he'll cry with you. It's all in a safe space for you to speak your truth. Oh, come and chat with